Aloha, I'm your host, Krista Stadler. Welcome to Condo Insider on Think Tech Hawaii, where we explore all topics relative to condo living and your condo investment. Today, our guest is Randy Traeger with Traeger Design, here to discuss Ordinance 19-4, the new fire code of the city and county of Honolulu. And Randy, welcome to Condo Insider again. Hey, thanks for having me back. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I know this is a really important topic and I've been kind of promoting it and encouraging people to um, watch this particular episode. Can you, I don't know if you want to start with telling us what it is and then telling us how, how it came about or why it came about or you know whichever, whichever way you want to do it, but I kind of want a little history of why it was implemented as well. Okay. <clears throat> um, it, was it, it got started because there was a tragic situation a few, two, recently, just a few years ago at the Marco Polo building. And what happened there was a disaster, to put it mildly. And the city officials, fire department officials, uh, they just said, we're not doing this again. We don't care. We're just not doing this again. So, oh, next slide. Um, and what they did is they uh, convened the city council. And this is like the third rendition of this bill. It's labeled 19-4, and it's in effect May 28th, because that's when the first one passed. Um, but it concerns uh, the how do you fire protect and make life a safe place in a high-rise building, apartment building, like a condo. And that was the whole thrust of this. So in order to uh, preserve life, which is the real function of anybody in, that protects people, such as the fire department people and the police, how do you protect life? So this then generated a uh, statement, essentially. And the statement was real simple. Um, why don't you do the next slide, OK? And um, if you have a building that has eight floors or more, then you now are affected by this new fire code. Um, and we, let's move to the next slide. What does it mean? You have to fire protect your building by a fire alarm system and by a fire suppression systems that are water-based. So what does that mean? Here in Honolulu, the fire department has identified 373 buildings that need this. It just so happens that out of that, there's 42,500 apartments. And we have till May 2026 to May 2030, depending on the kind of things that have to get done in order to have compliance. So one of the questions always is, well, that's expensive. Are there any options? And the answer is yes. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this in a few minutes, but it's called the Building Fire Life Safety Evaluation assessment. And it's to be performed by licensed design professional, authorized by the building management, and that has to be done in such a way that the design professional has to use his seal or stamp, he has to be authenticated, and he has to sign it, the report. And essentially, so I put a little note there of what that means. So we can talk for a second here and uh, just kind of get an idea yeah. what this is all about. Well, I, I definitely have some questions okay, about, go ahead. about this. Yeah. Um, so typically, um, I, I think you had mentioned to me earlier that only a very small amount of the of the required assessments have, have been actually completed. So there's quite a few more to go. How mm -hmm. long does it normally take uh, to do a full assessment, like on average? I know it depends on the size of the building and whatnot. And, and what is the typical cost? How is the cost determine, you know, what are some of the details of that assessment? What are they actually looking at during the assessment? Well, the assessment is trying to answer 17 very important categories. And they range from mobility, getting people out of the building, getting firefighters into the building. Okay, that's mm -hmm. actually all part of one part. And it goes on to 16 other categories after that. And you get a rating or a score, if you will. And that score is then tabulated at the end of the report. And you get, it boils down to about 
six or seven questions where that end up saying, yes, you comply, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, or no, you don't. Now, the thing about it is, in order to pass as a building for fire life safety, <coughs> you have to have all yeses. Oh. A single no means you're not qualified. You're not certified. <coughs> so what happens is now you have to bring your deficiencies up to standard. And the standards are set essentially by the building codes. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so that whole process starts at the basement, parking garage levels, mm -hmm. goes through every floor, every type of room, type of area, corridors, stairwells, lobbies, mechanical rooms, electrical rooms, janitor rooms, and it goes up every floor to the very roof because <clears throat> you have to inspect the roof also. Sure. And once you get all that done, then you have to do some engineering drawings and you prepare your report and you do your assessment essentially on a floor by floor basis all the way down. And there's three or four really key areas that they want to focus on. One of them is called a fire barrier. Mm -hmm. The other one is known as a smoke barrier, which most of us never think of. No. Then there is the alarm that's supposed to notify people that, hey, we got a problem. And then finally, uh, how do you get people out efficiently? And that's the real bugaboo. And the reason is a lot of our older buildings didn't really plan for these kind of things that well. They didn't do it. Are the I never I never asked this, but are these all these three hundred and seventy four units, seventy three? I mean buildings. Are they all residential, or is this a combination of commercial and residential? They're all condo buildings. Okay, okay. I thought I thought <coughs> so, but I was just curious. And the cost for this assessment, uh, how is that? Well, divvied up typically uh, amongst the. It's going to have to be essentially paid by every condo owner in the building eventually because that's who always ends up paying for anything in a building anyway of course so but to get this going we have to tell talk to let everybody know they have to vote mm -hmm. the management doesn't get to arbitrarily choose the law states the voter the, the residents of the building vote to either install sprinklers or they vote to do the life safety evaluation. And that's a recorded vote and it's submitted to the fire department. That's how serious this is. Yeah. That if they never voted, then they cannot move forward. And I would venture to say there are, are associations out there that probably haven't voted yet or haven't been able to come up with enough votes to form a quorum or whatever's necessary. Whatever their rules are, yeah. Right. Right, right. Yeah. But here's the thing, whatever the vote is, now it's applied entirely to every unit in the building. No one gets to opt out. Yes. All right. Now, this is just, we're just talking about the assessment. This is before either one of those decisions, any work takes place regarding that. Well, correct? that's the first decision is, are you going to do sprinklers or are you going to do the life safety evaluation? That's the vote. Right. And, yeah. then, and then there's a whole, then we get into the next layer of it, which right. is going to be whichever path you're going to go down. Sure. Now, the way the, the ordinance is set up, if you do choose to do the sprinklers and the alarm systems, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about the, the life safety evaluation. Totally ignore it. Don't even have to spend the money on it. That's correct. But you do have to spend the money to engineer your building for the water system and all that other stuff and the alarm system. you got to put that in no matter what. Which sounds significantly more expensive. I'm guessing it's going to be really expensive. The other yes. option. But then you also have until 2030 to get that completed. <coughs> Is that correct? It depends on the number of floors of the building. So if oh. you're over a certain number of floors, you could, you, you, your time frame stretches to 2030. I see. That's why you had the range in there. Correct. Yeah, 2026 to 2030. Depends on the number of floors of the building. Okay. So, uh, but money-wise, let's look at it this way. If you're going to sprinkle the building, it's not, it's numbers in the range of the mid-20s to the mid-30s per apartment. Mm. Oh, is, my goodness. Is, is the going idea right now. Nobody really knows because no one's done it yet. Mm -hmm. So when you ask how much is it, nobody knows hasn't been done yet. So, 
everybody is a guinea pig. Boy, I wonder if this is going to affect uh, sales for those older complexes that are right, on right, this right. list, I would imagine. That's well, a whole other conversation. That's another different conversation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're right. So, but the, the, whatever it is, it gets divided out. Now, the life safety evaluation to perform the corrections mm -hmm. probably is half yeah. or even a third or a quarter of doing the wet sprinkler system. Interesting. Wow. All right. So, so for the assessment, just the assessment, um, how long does that assessment take typically? Well, uh, there's only two companies doing it that I found so far. Mm -hmm. They're both engineering companies. They're specialty engineers. They're not fast. Um, we can tell because Mr. Denez, the fire chief, mm -hmm. as of the middle of January, he had 12. Out of, 300, out of 373. Wow. I, yeah, cause, and he was really disheartened mm -hmm. that it was that small. So what he did is in the middle of January, uh, the third week of January, he had all his building inspectors, because they know their buildings, right? Take a hand prepared letter from Mr. Nenez and personally hand deliver it to every building manager, face to face, eye to eye, hand to hand. A friendly reminder that they need to get on this and get going. I think that's a really good idea. He did it. it. Yeah. It took them three days. They only had three days to deliver these to all the buildings. That's amazing. But they did it. Wow. Now, what's happened after that? No one knows. Yeah. Well, they're going to have to get on a waiting list with one of these two companies well, to do the assessments. So what they really have to do is get their vote. Oh, well, well that, that, yeah, I guess that goes before anything, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. Nothing happens until they vote. My and they goodness. have to return the vote into the fire department. I do. Interesting. Yeah. Because that's who wants to see the vote is Mr. Nenez, the fire chief. So each board has to take the responsibility to provide that vote on some type of document yep. to, the fire, be, to the fire department. Yep, it's got to be documented. It's got to be legitimate. It's got to be, you know, there's always somebody that's going to complain about whatever. But whatever the vote is, it applies to the entire uh, occupants of all the buildings. Oh, my of gosh. The building. All right. Right, whatever so that vote is. So if they decide not to put the system in, Oh, you know what? I think we're gonna we're gonna stop and I'm gonna get into a big long discussion about something, and we've got to go to a break. So stay <laughs> tuned. This is extremely important information. If any of you live in a condo, own a condo, I should say, or a part of a board, so please uh, join us after the break at Condo Insider with Randy Traeger. Thank you so much. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Winston Welch, host of Out and About. It's a show that we have every other Monday on Think Tech Live here. We explore a variety of topics that are really interesting. We explore organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. We've got some amazing guests on here, like all the shows at Think Tech. So if you want to catch up on stuff, tune into my show every other Monday and other shows here on Think Tech Live. It's a great place to learn about stuff, to be informed, and uh, if you have some ideas, come on my show. Let's talk about it. See you later, and aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Condo Insider. I am your host, Krista Stadler, here with Randy Traeger with Traeger Designs, talking about Ordinance 19-4 um, regarding the new fire code. Well, it's not really new, but it's deadlines are coming up quickly. So let's talk about pick up where we left off and talk about if you if your board does decide not to go with the full sprinkler system installation and they're going to go uh, they're going to move forward with the assessment. What is the deadline to have the assessment? I guess completed, right? There's two steps. First, you have to turn in the assessment, and it has to be documented, etc., with all the things that you got to you know. By when? That is May third. 2021. Okay, I think we have a slide for that just to really 
really nail it tight it. in your brains, <laughs> right? Right. They have to, it says conducted, but what that means to the fire marshal guy is he wants to see it yes. by that date. Okay. That's exactly what he's talking about. So we're like, we're not talking a, just a little bit more than a year from now. Mm -hmm. And um, if I understand understood you correctly, there's only two companies that each have one person each. So two people doing these assessments, which could be a month to two months long, right? Yes. So we, if you haven't already, people, you got to get, get your board going and get your vote and decide which way you're going to go so you can exactly. meet these deadlines. Right. If they don't meet that deadline, uh, is there some type of fine or penalty? Oh, yeah, that's funny. I asked that of one of the fire inspectors. He said, well, right now the plan is they will get a notice of violation from the fire department. I'm sure there's some number, dollar amount <coughs> associated with that. Well, that means you have a clap and you have to bring your building into compliance or you have to show efforts to bring your building in compliance. And to be honest, uh, it turns out what that means in English, you have to file a building permit application to bring your building into compliance. Oh, and you wouldn't otherwise if you had, had completed the assessment on time? Well, that's the next step after the assessment. Yeah, okay. So you the, have to get a building permit to do the work. So the assessment is completed, <coughs> you, you, you meet your deadline, and now you need to move forward with actually um, making the changes in the building. So let's talk about if you don't choose to go with the full sprinkler system, what are some of the types of things that, that they're going to be um, having to change um, in their building? Well, to... smoke barriers is probably the single largest concern. And the reason is <clears throat> in a high rise building, uh, and it's been proven statistically nation, actually worldwide for a number of years, anywhere from two thirds to three quarters of the people who succumb to a fire in a building like that, it's because of smoke. That's what does it. Because there is a lot of toxins in smoke, a lot of toxins. And they come from the finishes that we install and other things like that. <clears throat> but we have to address a total of 16 categories. Smoke barriers is only one category. Fire barriers is another category, and those are de defined by building code, what they are, and how they're supposed to be constructed. Older buildings in the 60s, 70s, even through the early 80s, in mid 80s, they were kind of lax on doing those sorts of things at the construction level. And that's just because that was the nature of construction at the time. Sure. Today, just because the building seemed to be okay in 1972, doesn't mean it's still okay today. So what happens now is we have to compare the building to what is anticipated to bring compliance now. That's what's going on. And we have 16 categories to do it in. And one of the biggest categories is getting people out of the building. Oh, a plan to get them out. Yeah, that's the first thing on the checklist. How do you get them out? How do the fire department personnel go in? How do you get them out safely so nobody gets hurt? How do you get them, yeah. And the higher the number of floors, the more difficult it is. I can imagine. Right, and so some will have to build new stairwells, possibly. Is there any, any group other than being eight floors or less is there any other type of um building that would be an exception to uh, that would have an exception to having to do any of this there is it's a technical exception kind of hard to explain but if you're if all the floors of your building have walkways that are actually exterior of all the sleeping rooms and the apartments and the stairwells are open and not enclosed then those buildings can avoid the fire life safety requirement to go through. May not necessarily get them off the hook for putting in sprinklers and alarms, but it definitely, but it can do that. Now that's an exception. Uh, every building has to be evaluated whether or not that exception really applies to the building. That's, that's what happens. And I'm really curious <clears throat> about smoke barrier. What would be Tell me what they do to create a smoke. I mean, I understand a little bit more the fire barrier, but what what is this? Explain what a smoke barrier is. What does it, what does it look like? Yeah, well, that's a, 
Yeah, that's chapter seven of the building code, <laughs> okay. <laughs> And the half of the chapter is smoke barriers. But what do they do? What do they physically? You have this existing building that doesn't have a smoke barrier. What are you doing to it to create the smoke barrier? Uh, you have to seal connections and joints. Okay. Okay. A lot of concretes, fabricated building, concrete fabricated buildings, they have loose joints, but they were never correctly fire stopped, what we call fire stopped. So sometimes the solution is fire stopping certain things. Sometimes the solution is correcting the door going into a That's stable. what I was, yeah. Okay, correcting the door of the apartment. Okay, um, the ductwork. Some buildings have nat or they have forced ventilation with the fans on the roof and all the air in the apartments kind of goes. goes well, it just goes out the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that's where they vent the the uh, kitchen cooking area and they vent the bathrooms and if they have washer and dryers in the apartments that's where they vent the, wa the dryers. Absolutely. That all goes through ductwork. Well if you don't have and, and smoke travels up those ductworks and into all the apartments around the run of the ductwork even though there's no fire in there. Wow that is just. Then that has to be corrected. Yeah. I can see, I can, I live in a condo on the 23rd floor. I can just, I can just visualize everything you're talking about. And some of the condos have central air. Mm -hmm. Well, they all have return air ducts. And so those have to be considered. What do you do with those? Because if one apartment is causing a problem, you don't want it to pump air, it smoke air into other people's apartments. Absolutely. Especially when everyone is sleeping. This also sounds like just a huge, I hate to use the word disruption, but it's going to be no matter which way you go, there's going to be disruption to the the occupants of the building as the work's being done. That's correct. And sounds like almost in most of these cases, again, no matter which way you go, they may have to even vacate their property for a period of time. Well, basically, you do it floor by floor. Mm -hmm. That's really the only way you can do it. And um, so you have to make your remedies floor by floor. You either start from the bottom and work your way up, or you start at the roof and work your way down. And uh, that's essentially how you have to do it. And then there's testing along the way to make sure the work that you did actually functions the way it's supposed to. And, there's, and you still have to put in the alarm system. Which connects to the fire department. The fire department. Right. You still, no matter what, you got to put the alarm system in. And then there would be testing as time goes on. Has this type of ordinance and kind of the way they're structuring it been done in any other city in the United States that you know of? Well, Hawaii is unique. You know, Hawaii was all the high-rise condo building rules and et cetera, et cetera, originated here in Hawaii. Interesting. Back in the 60s. Meaning that the other... They didn't have high-rise apartment buildings in other cities in those days, except for people like New York and some well, of the other cities, yeah, like yeah. Chicago, New York. And San Francisco. And yeah, San, well, San Francisco didn't have a lot of high-rises because their soil doesn't allow for those kind of foundations, so they don't have too many. They have some now, but they're yeah. all office buildings, like Transamerica and people like that. So, but, so we're yeah. kind of the trendsetter? We are the trendsetter. <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe the guinea pig. I'm not sure which way you want to look at it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like using the term guinea pig. Yeah, well, somebody's got to do it. I so. suppose. Anyway, you're, but you are correct that uh, we are paving the way. Because we have more high-rise apartment buildings per square foot, you know, per land mass mm -hmm. on this island than probably any other city in America. Now, you have to go to Hong Kong, you get the other Asian countries, you're going to see lots of it over there, and you same thing in Japan, Korea, and all those other countries. Uh, you know, those, because they're used to it, that's what they built. Yeah, exactly. So your company, you, along with it sounds like... Um, I have a team. Your team, you are, you'll actually be, or actually are, you're providing the assessments yes. now? Okay. Yeah, we'll be doing the assessments. Um, we're connected with a contractor who has all the correct licenses to perform any of the correction works. So it's very important because sure. not all the contractors have the correct licenses. Very so cool. they have to depend on other people coming in on a schedule basis, but if you have a contractor that had, does have all the proper licenses, they just schedule their crew, bang, bang, bang. Do you feel like 
I'm feeling like it, but do you feel like the the building department's just going to be bombarded with, as people wait and procrastinate, as we can see they are, and you know they will, um, are they just going to be bombarded with permits to get yes. these things done? Yes. Yeah. I yes. mean, I'm wondering how fast, I mean, everything has its delays, the well, voting and the, you know, all of it has its delays. That gets us back to the permitting process that's now in, in effect from December 2018, and what it says is, you better do good quality and complete detailed information drawings, not omitting anything. Mm. And then you can go through the system pretty well. But the trick is if you shortchange the information on the drawings for expediency reasons, then your drawings will be kicked back and sometimes they'll just simply be say, sorry, but your plans are rejected. Yeah. Start over, and they only have they only reject them once or twice before two, they just you get two cycles. Two, two. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So better. They don't care right how the big the building is. You get two. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So That's having nice. some Akamai on how to put all that together is going to be extremely valuable. Right. The whole process. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that's what I've been doing for a long time is condos and doing that. So I've yeah. got some familiarity. Exactly. Sounds like you're going to be very, very busy. Could be. But uh, if people don't vote, there's nothing to do. <laughs> well, that's true, but it doesn't sound like they're really not going to have a choice when it comes right down to it. It's just how long it's Well, here's the deal. If out. they don't vote, then they will put in sprinklers. The, oh, that's just going to have to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to have a choice. That's right. So that's best, best not to have your choice taken away from you and to to vote and make the best decision based on... The ownership of that particular condo. Exactly. So, right. Right. Well, I really appreciate you being here. And also, can you please share your website information again? Oh, it's um, it's TraegerDesign808.com. Okay. That's well, it. Randy, you have all of this information and a bit more actually that we kind of cut out um, for people to go ahead and go on yep. and do that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.